So this lab is typically done with agar cubes with BTB soaked in acetic acid solution. I have always found the agar cubes too flimsy for the students to manipulate and quite difficult to make agar cubes of different sizes. So I've substituted them with potato cubes and I've also substituted the acetic acid solution for an iodine solution. Each student receives a large potato cube and cuts out five cubes from them, though some students may need two potatoes to be able to make the larger cubes. The smallest is 0.5 centimeters in each side and the largest is 2.5 centimeters in each side with increments of 0.5 centimeters in between for a total of five trials. Students can then calculate surface area volume and the surface area to volume ratio using this information. Once the cubes are cut out, submerge them in large beakers containing iodine. The smaller cubes will comfortably fit in 100 milliliter beakers, but the larger cubes need 200 milliliter beakers and significantly more iodine. You should run the experiment with the small cubes first and collect data while the large cubes are being submerged, thus reducing the volume of iodine required. You should also keep this iodine for the following year or repurpose it to reduce chemical waste. Anywhere between 20 to 30 minutes is sufficient for some of the iodine to diffuse into the potato cubes. The first observation students should make is the fact that the distance diffused into the potato cubes is the same or very nearly the same for all cubes. What's different is what that distance represents from the total volume of the cube, or in the case of our dependent variable, the area of the square we are observing. To collect your dependent variable, cut the potato cube in half and measure the total area of the exposed interior of the cube. Then measure the area of the yellow square at the center, which has not come in contact with the iodine and subtract this value from the total. With these values, you can obtain the percentage area diffused with iodine, your dependent variable. Key skills that I like to stress in this activity. The fact that data tables must be ready prior to data collection. The use of the comment tool in either numbers or Excel to add qualitative observations on a trial. The attention to detail as a process data requires a calculation step prior to calculating the average. And the fact that each student does one trial of each treatment in order to minimize random error. As we debrief the activity, especially because this is one of the first ones of the program, I like to ask students how technology can help facilitate data collection. For instance, instead of having students collect data into their own data tables and then share them orally or via email, uh, they could set up a data table on Google Sheets or Microsoft 365 and everyone can then enter the data in the same spreadsheet at the same time. There are many benefits to this, including saving time. Another way of incorporating technology, this time in the method of data collection itself, is to use cell phones to take photos of the potato cubes together with a ruler and then use Logger Pro to calculate the area, much like we did in the magnification activity. Another software that is great for this is called ImageJ and does the same function as well.